So I think we're uh, recording now. So um, uh, welcome to what's hopefully the first in a series on cluttering with, uh, with, uh, with Yvonne and with, uh, with me, Joseph Dewey. And actually um, Yvonne's name is, or I, I can't remember if it's Yvonne or Yvonne or um, Yvonne Van, uh, Van Zalen. Um, with my uh, with my poor um, accent because I think the bond is actually something like bond. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> okay, and um, and I'm I, I'm really excited. I I, I recently bought um, Yvonne's book and it looks to be like the best book on cluttering um, since Dessa Weiss's book or or actually his um, his book's kind of old and dated. And, and Yvonne's full of um, new and useful techniques. So, so it's probably actually the best book on cluttering, um, even though I think there are only three David Daly, like, like three actual like books on cluttering. So, uh, but, but anyway, um, it, um, even if there were uh, 50 books, it would probably be the best book on cluttering. So, so anyway, um, Yvonne's, the, uh, Yvonne's kind of famous since she has the most famous book on um, cluttering out there. And um, I'm someone um, with, um, with cluttering and um, and I think um, that's a uh, um, that's a good um, intro in introduction. A um, actually, I, I probably should introduce Yvonne's um, accomplishments, but I um, I actually forgot forgot them all. Besides, she's super smart. She um, she's um, she's a, a professor or or something, and um, and a whole bunch and a whole bunch more stuff. So anyway, is that a is that a good enough? Um, Bad introduction? Well, you almost got it all. And I think the most important for me is to say that, um, oh, yes, I'm super smart. And thanks for the compliments for the book. Um, but um, I'm also a, a partner of a person with cluttering. And I'm a mom of a person who clutters. So, um, and being a scientist, being a therapist, and being partner and mom, um, that gave me a lot of, of knowledge on cluttering. And I really love to share that knowledge with everyone. Okay, um, cool. So, so, um, so the first, um, and, and I, uh, I should probably let you introduce this, but, um, but the first, uh, the first um, video is about what is, uh, what is cluttering and, um, and, and what, um, what it, what it is, what it isn't, and just an introduction, um, because I think, I think a lot of people really want to know more about it, and um, I, I think lots and lots of people are, uh, like, like especially parents of kids with cluttering, um, their their kid gets diagnosed and then they immediately search for what um, what is this. Um, so so I think um, this this should be a great video for people to say, hey, well, what um, what the heck is this thing that my kid just got diagnosed with? Yeah, well, thanks thanks for the opportunity to to explain it, and I really want you to uh, to ask questions uh, in between if it's not very clear because. I think it's it's extremely important that parents and people with cluttering understand what it is and how it works and why it's so different in different circumstances. So to better understand it, if you understand your own um, condition, then you can also work on it or can improve it. And I use the word condition because it's not a disorder, it's not a, it's not a disease. Um, in, in, in essence, people with cluttering are too good they're too fast and um, they, they, they are able to talk so fast that my brain, not being a person with cluttering, can count process all the information at the same time. So yes, uh, it gives a lot of, it can give a lot of problem, problems and trouble and issues um, in, in, in school, in lifespan, but uh, in essence, you're simply too good. Um, and please, people with cluttering have to, to understand that the others in the world, um, uh, in order to understand them, need, you need a little bit adjustment. And that, that is a very important word, adjustment. So to make it clear, um, a person is able to, to process language five syllables per second. That is, that is a number worldwide, like five syllables per second. If we use that, we can process it, we can understand each other. And well, we have a good conversation, especially when there's pauses in between sentences, then we can understand each other. 
um, I, I can, I didn't measure it, Joseph, but <laughs> if I'm listening to you and I measured you once, but it was years ago, I think you're on 11, 11 syllables per second. So that is, well, it's, it's not a record, it's fast. Um, but that has a big influence in your production, in my processing and our mutual understanding, of course. And I thought uh, for years how to explain it. And then uh, I was confronted again with Levout's model. And um, there's a picture that I sent to you. Maybe you can, can show that, that we can all have a look at the, the picture of Levout's model of language production. And I know this is a simplified version of the whole language production, but it, at least it gives us some um, indication how it works and how it, uh, how it can be in trouble. So here's the, here's the model. And um, in my years as a therapist, I have explained this model like thousands of times to children and to adults. And in the beginning, my colleague said, really, did you explain it? Yes. And if you understand this, then you understand how cluttering works. So let's, let's go for it. And if you don't understand, you'll ask me questions. So what Leveld calls the conceptualizer is in essence, is an idea. It's something in my, uh, in my mind. I have an idea. I want to share this message with my audience. Normally, you monitor at that same moment, is this my right audience? So sometimes an idea pops up in your brain and you think, well, I should not talk, tell other people this story. I should not tell her, her that. And of course, we all know that this monitoring does not work if you're tired, drunk, or on the influence of drugs. Yeah, so then if you're too tired, you, tell, you start to tell things and later on you ask your friends, did I really say that? Oh my goodness. Um, so this monitoring is important. I will come back to that later. Um, you have an idea, but in essence, nothing happened. Before you can share that idea with the listener, you need formulation. And the, you need words to do that. The words, you, you grab the words from your lexicon, you put them in a grammatical sentence, in, and that sentence has all these words. And at the same time, you have to... Um, to, to build up the words. So that's what we call phonological encoding. Um, just give an example, um, telephone, telephone, there's three syllables. I need to, to make sure that my brains know, brain knows that I have to say that first, then le, and then phone. And all of this, the words in the sentence and the, the, the syllables and sounds in the word all of that is programmed all together and then sent to the articulator. If that works well, I speak out and I'm fluent and understandable. Um, even me, I'm not fluent today because I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit tired. I'm in my passionate topic and I'm talking in a language that's not my own. So some things um, go wrong and I don't mind. Uh, but what I what happens is if I speak, I do hear myself speak and I decide if I need to correct. That's my speech comprehension system thinks, do I really need to correct this? Do I need to use another word to go back to my lexicon uh, and also to plan that word again? Or just can I just continue to talk because I see that Joseph is still getting me. So I'm monitoring is Joseph getting my story here. So if we go back to the rate that we were just discussing, normally that, that idea to articulator, the first left line goes in five seconds, five syllables per second. And like I told you, Joseph, you're around 11. So that same process, you do the same process, but you do it way more faster than I do. So at two levels, things can go wrong. In cluttering, it's always oh, and, in the um, formulator. So since you wanted me to stop and, and interject, um, this, of course. This, is actually, yeah. uh, this is actually a really cool concept that, and, and I, I, haven't, I, I haven't heard of it 
like that uh, like that before as far as as far as syllables per second. Um, one of uh, one of my big questions is why when when people can't understand me or when people when I kind of lose people in conversation, then why? And um, and and after you explained that, then I kind of realized, oh, um, maybe it's because I'm like speaking at a syllable rate that is just too fast for people to process. So so anyway, that's. Uh, that, uh, yeah. that's a, uh, well, that's you're almost there. So let me go back just a little bit. So if I if I got the right word out of my lexicon, let's say elephant, uh, I'm talking about a zoo as I'm making a sentence with elephant in it. I, I, I put the words in the right order. That's called the grammatical encoding. Um, if if I pick the word and I don't take enough time to pick it, then 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 you you start hearing people say like, what what is it called again? You know you know the you know the thing with the the animal. You know with the you get all this uh, what what we call noise. Yeah. So uh, we hear a person think and we hear a person trying to grab the word out of the lexicon. And those are what we call normal disfluencies. So it's a lot of noise. It's a lot of additional words that we don't really need in order to get to the right word. So that is what can go wrong in, in the line between the grammatical encoding and the lexicon. Another thing that can go wrong, if I want to say um, like Madagascar, that's one of the words that my son used, he was always talking about Madagascar. And Madagascar uh, has the same syllables as Madagascar, but the order is, is wrong. So in planning, in the phonological encoding, in planning the syllables, he had the right syllables, but he put it in the wrong time. And another thing that we see a lot in, in people with uh, phonological cluttering is that uh, they don't take enough time. So a word like Madagascar becomes Mahaska. So we only have three syllables or please in instead of police, we only have one. So you see what we call telescoping. And so it's like a telescope that the syllables are squeezed in together. And that is has everything to do with the rate. Um, and it is important to understand, no one wants to say effent. Everyone thinks he wants to say elephant. But if you say it so fast and you make this mistake, why don't you hear it? And why do I hear the mistake? That is an important issue. Why don't people with cluttering hear all this, all this noise um, while well, the listener does hear all the noise, and that has to do with the fastness. And so, so that doesn't, um, to me, that doesn't immediately make sense. Even though, um, even though it kind of, it, it kind of makes sense, um, because and and I, um, the one that I know that I did a lot is is telescoping probably into like probably or um, yeah. And, and I think I think lots of people do that, but um, but but like I know I, I remember that a lot of words with a lot of R's and L's I would I would telescope um, be, um, before I before I figured out a lot of stuff about cluttering. So 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 why um, why is it that why is it the, that that has to do with rate? Because I I'm not I'm not fully making the connection. Well, the rate has to do with the amount of time that you um, that you program uh, that you that you make free to put to, to put in all the syllables. So one of the issues that we see, I have to go a little bit back, and and, and I will get back to this. Um, when I ask people with phonological cluttering, and it's really different from the syntactical one, the ones with all the all the, all the noise and, and all the all the words that you think are pff, easy. That's a different type of cluttering. Then, that, then it goes wrong on the level of grammatical encoding. But in the phonological cluttering, what you see is that um, if I ask them to to count the syllables, they even give me the wrong numbers. So if I ask them how many syllables does this word have, and I give them a multisyllabic word, they, most of the time they're wrong. They give me less syllables than they give when they write it down. So 
what what that means is that uh, too little time is is um, made free to put in all the syllables to be pronounced. Understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes and, sense. That makes and sense. and when I this when I first tested uh, adults uh, in my clinic, and I'm talking about 15, 20 years ago. And I tested the normal uh, things that we assume that, that at the age of six, seven, eight, people are able to do, count the syllables in words. I was really stunned that a lot of people with cluttering had deep issues there because they were so fast, the whole programming of the amount of syllables was not completely okay there. So it's, um, it is the planning in time that goes wrong. And it is, has nothing to do with pronunciation because your pronunciation, for instance, is also perfect, but it has to do with the planning in time. Do, we, do you have enough time planned so you can pronounce all the syllables? Or if you don't have enough time, you're so fast and capable, you just squeeze everything in. And if you, if you play um, the speech very slowly, really very slowly, you hear more syllables than you hear when you play it on a normal rate. So some of the syllables are so fast, we can't even hear them with our normal five second brain. But if you, if you prolong it, then you suddenly see that there are more syllables there. So there's an issue with rate. Well, to make it a little bit more complex, because it's not as easy as, as, as this is. Um, what we see is that if you, if you ask a person with cluttering to do something and there's focus on the speech production, that he's way better than when he's unfocused. So if I would say like, uh, Joseph, can you tell me this or that? And I give you two minutes to do that. You can be perfect. You can give perfect presentations as long as you don't practice too much. But um, if you practice and you're prepared only, then you can do that perfectly. But if we were in a bar together and you were having a beer, then I think it will take a lot of effort to, to listen and to hear what you say, because at that time, you're not focused on your speech. You're focused on the fun and on the company, et cetera. And that focus, a focused speech is way better than unfocused speech in people with cluttering. It's completely understandable uh, because um, when they're unfocused, they don't sp um, spend enough attention to the production, to the syllables or to the, um, to the sentence formulation. And to make it even... So, if I ask a person with cluttering to read out loud, he does not need to formulate. So the whole uh, slide that I just showed you, the only thing he needs to do is phonological encoding. To sentences, you don't need to, to make up the story, it's already done. And in many people with cluttering, when they read out loud, they do relatively well. When they tell a story for the third, fourth, seventh time, they do relatively well. If they tell, give me their opinion, it becomes already a little bit more difficult because if you give your opinion, um, you don't even, you, you not only formulate, but you also take into account emotions and thoughts of yourself. And the highest level of language complexity is that um, is arguing, trying to convince you about my opinion. And what that means that I have to take into account your thoughts, your emotions, my thoughts, my emotions, and at the same time speak and produce language. And so that language complexity is so, so difficult that sometimes people clutter and only on the level of arguing, you hear the cluttering and all the levels below, they can control their speech production perfectly. And, and that makes it very difficult. So people go to a speech therapist, they have a complaint, they sit there, they're focused, they practice their story, 
and the speech therapist does not hear anything. That is a big issue. I've, I had met so many clients who said, you are this, your number you know, seven or six. And the other, person, other therapist told me, I don't hear it. Now you have to go deeper in the language complexity sometimes to hear it. So if you think about severity, if it already starts in, uh, in naming or in, in reading, then it's called severe cluttering. If it only happens on the highest level of language complexity, then we call it uh, milder cluttering. But that doesn't mean anything about the, the um, effect it has on participation. So, so do you argue with all your clients to, um, to test their like um, severe level of Yes, <laughs> yes, and, and uh, I make recordings with my clients um, with no, them knowing it and especially with them not knowing it. And I know that is ethically completely wrong, but still we wait to find out. So the first session, I always invite them and a, um, a partner or mom or a dad. And then I already uh, open up the recorder, leave my laptop recording and in, ask them if they want a cup of tea or drink. I leave the room for two minutes knowing that they will talk when I'm not there. And then when I come back, I tell them, I'm so sorry. I, have, I will explain to you why I did this, but I recorded your talk. Um, is it okay for me to listen to it? Because it's very important for me at the first session already to have this unfocused speech. And in all those years, I had one occasion with a person who said, I really do not want you to hear it. He had an argument with his girlfriend through the phone. Um, and I always tell them, if you don't want me to hear it, I will delete it. And I will also delete it from the bin of my computer that it's completely gone. But I hope I can, uh, you, you allow me to, to analyze it uh, anyway. And oh, so that's, when that's, that's really, um, that's really interesting. And, uh, and a very good way to um, to, um, to get something like that really quickly. Like um, like 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 I've um, I've been thinking I've been thinking of that because like like as you mentioned this this isn't my normal speech. This is much better than my normal speech. Um, and and the only times when I've actually like successfully captured cluttering is when um, when like I'm um, so someone's here <clears throat> someone's here and I'm talking over there. And I'm I'm talking to someone and I, and I don't know that I'm being recorded, and so 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 especially. Well, well, um, just let me tell you this: I never ask my clients to to record their cluttering. I always involve um, friends, parents, and uh, brothers and sisters, and of course I ask for them their permission. But brothers and sisters are so keen to record the cluttering moments and they give me the best, you know, and we also say we can do this for a week and then you have to stop doing this in this way. It's, it's informative. That's why we need it. But as soon as, um, as a therapist, as soon as you say I start recording, the speech is focused and the speech is way better. So you can't record, you can't record it in that, that way. I have to tell one more thing. We were talking about the language complexity levels. Um, if you ask a normal speaker who's not cluttering, and that's a little bit weird to say normal, but it's, it's a little bit easier. A non-cluttering is so many syllables. Mm -hmm. So let, excuse me for that. Um, um, but if you ask a normal speaker to do something very difficult, in speech, what he will do is he will slow down. So one of the tests that we uh, that I developed in years with with colleagues is the screening phonological accuracy. So we give them very difficult words that they have never produced before, and it's impossible to produce those in the same rate as you normally speak. And you see that normal people think, oh my goodness, that is a very difficult task, you know, and they slow down. You see that people with a, with a stuttering component, they don't want to make any mistake, they go even slower than that. And then you have the person with cluttering. 
um, anything. Ah, no, you know, we're having fun and they go fast. And even if they try to slow down, the task is so, um, uh, what is the word, triggering that they go as fast as normal speech. So when we look at these speech conditions, we look at, do you adjust your rate to the complexity level? And what is the effect on your fluency or your intelligibility? And if you do adjust, so if you go slower in more difficult situations, then you cannot say you are a person with cluttering or you are a person who has been through effective cluttering therapy. That is the only thing. If you don't adjust, that is the main, the key issue of cluttering. And, um, and that's, um, that's, that's really interesting. And I, I, I kind of got a flashback from when I, um, from when I did that. Um, I remember reading out loud one of the chapters of the Bible with, uh, with, with a lot of genealogy of a bunch of, um, uh, um, I can't remember what, uh, what chapter it was, but just like this person begat this person, this person begat this person. And, and as you were describing that, I had this like flashback of me, not really, um, like, um, like now that I have, now that I've listened to you explain this, then I would, pr I would probably recognize, okay, I need to slow down. But I think I just read over all of those words with, um, with the same, like the same rate as I read the rest, the, the following chapter that didn't have that. So, so that's, um, yeah, that's, well, really, um, that's really, really interesting. And, and, yeah. and, and can, a cool I, thing can I commit to... something here, very important here, Joseph, in the reading is that, um, if you force a person with cluttering to read without mistakes, he can do it. Um, and a lot of people with cluttering get the label of being dyslectic because they make these, like say, easy errors. Because you make the errors in the smaller words. That take, you, there's not enough focus there. If, if I would give you a, um, a difficult word, you would focus to that difficult word. But you just, all the small words, you know, you, you just pass over that as a Formula One car. Um, so, and there's another thing with reading, um, because in the Leifeld's model, we don't need to get go back to it, but you saw audition. So you hear yourself talk. And we see that a person with cluttering who is making errors in reading, if we give them auditory feedback, the errors are diminishing in a way, it sounds like a miracle, but it's not. It's only the heightened auditory feedback that makes their focus higher. And that's why the errors don't occur anymore. So it's not a reading problem, but sadly, the, the, a lot of people with cluttering, uh, especially uh, get uh, misdiagnosed with dyslexia. And it's so easy to, to, to differentiate the, the, the two, um, even only with the auditory feedback. And um, and that's uh, that's that's really interesting. I um, I'm I'm totally fascinated by dyslexia. Um, I read um, I read this really cool book called um, The Dyslexic Advantage. I don't know if you've no. read that before, but um, but it's it's really cool in that it talks about all the like good things about dyslexia, like like people with people with dyslexia um, have all of these strengths. So so it really just focuses on the strengths of people with mm -hmm. dyslexia. But, um, but one of the reasons I'm fascinated by it is that I think on the spectrum of, of me and then someone with dyslexia, then I'm like totally on the, totally on the opposite side. So, um, so, yeah. so like my friends with, um, my friends with dyslexia, then I always, um, I always like, I, I always think, okay, why, why are, um, like, like, like one of the things I noticed with dyslexia is that people with dyslexia are really, really observant um, and, and this is probably a broad generalization, but, um, but, but I've noticed that my friends with dyslexia, they, they can just like tell a whole bunch of stuff about the environment where, uh, where I'm more like focused on like one thing, but, um, but, but my friends with dyslexia are um, like kind of have a really big broad picture view of everything. So, um, so, so anyway, um, so let, let me give you the good side of cluttering. <laughs> no. My, my daughter is a person um, who is a, a person with cluttering. She doesn't mind me telling. Um, 
and she's a polyglot, so she's fluent in seven languages in reading, writing, and speaking. So just to indicate it's not a language issue, but she is very fast. And if she's too fluent in a language, she, is for, she, she shows phonological cluttering. That's, that's uh, to, to be in short. Um, and at one time she, she told me, mommy, my brain keeps on going. It's fast, there's no inhibition in my brain. But you know what it gave me? I did three studies at the same time. I can do multitasking way better than other people do. I have associative thoughts. I'm creative because my brain goes, uh, keeps on going. So I would not want to live without cluttering, to be honest. It gave me too much. It gave me a lot of trouble, but it also helped me out in so many ways. And it made her very, very um, fluent in so many languages. It gave her so many social contacts. So. And that's, my, that's not only my daughter who tells me this, but there's, there's a lot of good in, in cluttering, as long as you understand where it can give problem with the other, other person in the communication line. Um, that, um, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, so one, of the things, um, one of the things I kind of want to go back to that you, uh, that you mentioned before is um, that, that, that I think is really helpful for understanding uh, understanding cluttering is kind of the uh, kind of the pattern of um, the pattern of that the um, how how familiar you are with the subject and then um, the the speech level and yeah. and you mentioned kind of uh, you mentioned kind of three phases that that initially um, initially the spe initially spe like like if you if you say okay um, give this give this speech. So initially, the in, initially with a clutter with, with someone with cluttering, they their speech is really bad, and then about time um, time three to seven, um, the speech improves, and then um, and then which is really really different than most people, um, times three um, um, times seven, and then later the speech just goes really really downhill, um, and I and I think it's because. Um, because if I have the speech memorized, then I'm like, okay, blah, 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 blah. Um, just say it as fast as, as possible. And so, so I think, um, I think that, um, that pattern of familiarity with, uh, with, with kind of the, um, the graph of going up and then going down is something, um, is, is one way of, of like telling, okay, yeah, this is, um, this is cluttering because at first, at first it was really bad. Then he seemed like he was improving. Then he got really bad again um, as he got more familiar with it. Oh, and, and actually, um, that, um, that's that's my version. I think um, I think yeah. actually hearing hearing your version that's a little bit more analytic, analytical would be really helpful. Yeah. Well, well, the issue is that um, the same person has moments of more and less cluttering in the same day. And what is very important is in this um, is that. Um, cluttering will happen more at home than in an area where you have to perform, like school, like work. So um, when you look at younger children, the parents complain a lot because they can't hear, they can't follow their own children. And what they go to the teacher and they say, well, you know, I have a complaint about, can you listen to my child? And the, ch and the teacher will tell you, I don't have a problem. And that because the focused and unfocused, that's a completely different situation. If you look at adults, then it happens in the other way. So at home, when they are with their partners, they're not focused on their speech and they have an argument, then the partner can get, can get frustrated. Why don't you talk? clear to me, I don't understand you. And then mom comes in the room and suddenly the speech is perfect. You know, because then their focus on speech changes. So the partners tell me a lot, like if he talks to someone important, he can do it. But if he talks to me, he can't. And they take that personally. And, but in fact, it's nothing more than focused, unfocused uh, on speech behavior. And that, that is important and has nothing to do at all with tension. If it has something to do with tension, it has to do with relaxation, but not with tension as we know it in stuttering. 
and that is that is very difficult to understand and um, also the in the beginning I talked about the monitoring if you if you start to become tired the same uh, task on the level of language complexity in the morning can be easier than in the afternoon or around five you know then your your speech declines because you're simply tired and speech production, language production takes energy. So if your energy goes down, your production goes down. So there's, there's, it is, it is way more complex than, ah, he does it or he does not, not do it. And that makes it difficult. And that's why um, in assessment, I always as I talk about a profile instead of a test, you know, you test and you failed. You test and you pass. No, it's a profile. You have to look at all the conditions. Um, and I did not mention uh, one thing, and that is important, Joseph. And I don't, you didn't ask me, but I have to tell you. Um, if you have work with children, you have to understand if their language um, um, development is in is is normal. Is 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 expected to age. Um, if you test children with cluttering, there are these issues with these normal disfluencies, so you have to take that out. But um, in essence, their language production should be should be normal, and uh, in many cases it is. And the fact that they think so fast and they they're uninhibited in fast, fast, fast. Uh, you see that a lot of these kids have very high levels of intelligence. I've not done research. This is only based on practice-based evidence. Um, but many of my clients had a level of IQ like this, and it didn't match with the level of language production. And that's why there was, uh, there was an issue there. So it's not a language problem. It's not a speech problem. Never ever try to do speech exercises for someone who's even better than you are, because you don't you, know, you don't have a speech problem. Huck, um, so so I have a um, I have a kind of um, if if you're okay with a wild um, tangent, um, kind of inspired by what you were talking about about five minutes ago. Um, one of the things that I'd really like to hear um, your analysis on, kind of in kind of in the same um, vein as we've been talking about, is that um, something that bothers me is when people confuse my speech with me being nervous, because a lot of um, a lot of times, um, a lot of times the only um, the only time people have heard someone speak like me is when like they got nervous, that's what happens to their speech. When other people get nervous, that's what happens to their speech. When, <clears throat> when, when they hear my normal speech, which is cluttered, then they say, oh, okay, he's, he's nervous. Joseph, Joseph, calm down. Um, and, and, and so, um, so um, could, um, could you talk about that? Like, uh, what's, what's the difference between um, cluttered speech and nervous speech? Or is, um, is there one or, or, or why? Why, why are people thinking that I am nervous when I'm uh, not? Well, um, I, can, I can give you the analytical side, I can give you the funny side. And I decide to start with the funny side first. Uh, because if you look at comedians, in essence, they use cluttered speech a lot to be funny. I don't know if you ever uh, realize that, but they make a, they talk very fast if they want to make a joke, and then they stop in time. And um, and the um, the unrest that is part of your speech, the unrest is the noise. You give me too much many words that I don't need. You use you use you use you use you use you use the same you say same words a couple of times. You could have said you used the same word a couple of times, and that would be easier for my brain. So what it does with my brain is in the beginning, my brain is telling me you have to remember all this, all these words this person is telling me. And that's a lot to, to process for my brain. And then you don't even stop between sentences. So it's even more. So it makes me feel 
unrest, unease. You understand? Because I have to remember everything. So then I have two choices. I either decide only to look at, to listen to the superficial content, and then you get the aha uh -huh remarks, or I just start thinking about something else. If it's too um, much, and, that's what so, we're And so uh, that's a, uh, if, if I'm understanding that right, that's an interesting theory that, um, that when I am speaking, then it's making the other person anxious and they're thinking, okay, well, um, he, he must be the nervous one um, because I feel so um, anxious. So uh, uh, because- it's, it's mirroring because you make me uneasy because you give me all this information that I need to process and you don't give me time to do that. That makes me feel uncomfortable. And then I see your behavior and there's a lot and the combination makes people think he is, he is nervous. And, and we do have a lot of prejudice in language production in the world. If you have a low, slow voice, you are strong and confident, et cetera. And if you uh, use a lot of gestures, even if I don't talk, but if I do all these kind of things, then people think, oh my goodness, this person is, is nervous. Do you realize that you, that you make a lot of body movements when you talk in a cluttered way? Um, no. You do? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't so know. That, that adds to the picture, you know? So you give me too much body movement, you give me too much words, you don't give me enough time to process, and that makes me uncomfortable, and that's why I give it a negative label. It, it's not happening to me, you understand. I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> but that, that's yeah, what um, I was going to say, calm down, calm down. I, did, I didn't mean to um, stress you out like that, um, but, but you were talking in... Um... I'm not at all stressed. <laughs> No, after 30 years working with cluttering, that, that doesn't affect me anymore. But that is what, it, what the effect is. And um, if you would be a person with a foreign look, then the, at, at first they say, okay, this is a foreigner, I, I don't get this guy. So if, if you are a foreigner in a country with cluttering, well, then you have a double deficit. It's, it's so, com because they see a different face and they think oh this is difficult this is a person that is difficult to understand then they start talking and there's already a little bit difficulty and then people give up and that is that is a double deficit here yeah but there there um there's a lot of good in just filming yourself when you talk to someone and have a look this is this the way i want to look if, if i look at myself talking that do I look good? You know, and now we're talking, you're looking in the camera, you are completely at ease. But if, if, I, if I would give you a topic to talk about, then, you know, there, then you see all this uh, unrest. And, and that's, um, that's in many cases misunderstood if you don't have time to process the message. Hmm. That's, um, that's really interesting and, and something I haven't, I haven't really thought about before. So, um, so, so one, um, one, one other, um, one other thing that I want to, uh, that, that I want to talk about is, is kind of how, how you would, um, like, like if you had just two minutes to describe what cluttering is to someone that has never heard of it before, how would you, how would you do that? It's a way of speech in which a person is not able to adjust the rate of speech to the demands of the moment. And you can hear that by, uh, because that person becomes uh, disfluent or um, it makes him unintelligible. That's less than two minutes. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and then and then one of the things you talked about before before our call is what what cluttering is not, and and you kind of um, you, you talked about that a little bit, but what what isn't cluttering or what? Well, cluttering is not a language problem. 
And and what um, what is um, what does that mean? I I've read um, I've read a few. Yeah. Um, well, I, I've read you a don't few have to practice language What language and speech and and other uh, other stuff actually means? Yeah. Well, it's not a language problem. Means that it is a problem associated with language. It's a condition associated with language, of course. We talked about it, language complexity. But in essence, you see that a lot of people with cluttering are very good in grammatical encoding. Um, they can make very good stories. Uh, and, and, and if you ask them to write down, you see wonderful language production. But if they speak, they go too fast. That, that, is, one of the, that is one of the things that is important. Um, it is not a speech disorder. And so what's, <clears throat> what's an example of a language problem? Well, a language problem could be that a person has a too small lexicon, so they don't have enough words. Well, we tested, we tested so many people with cluttering and their word um, amount is, is tremendous, is, is not lower than normal. In many cases, it was, it was higher. Um, and you see that in, in, in some people, they do have problems to make grammatical correct sentences or to build up a story with a, with a start and a, and a, and a, what, a situation and a morale and an ending. And people with cluttering can do that very well, but only in a focused condition. Huh. And that's uh, that's really interesting because one of the uh, before I realized I had a speech problem, or um, and, and actually you said it's not a speech problem, but, but before uh, before I before I realized I had cluttering, yeah, um, I um, I think I I think I um, I think I kind of subconsciously knew um, that 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 there was something going on, and one of my ways that I um, tried to, um, try, tried to fix it or try, tried to, uh, what, uh, whatever is by learning as many words as I could, um, like, um, like, like, like just, um, uh, whenever I, uh, whenever I found a new word, then I would try to, try to memorize it. And so, and so I, I um, my, um, my way of trying to like self, um, like, like, like my self, Therapy before I realized what I was cluttering was to try and build up my vocabulary, but but I realized that uh, that was like that was really cool um, as a hobby, but it didn't actually do anything to impact my speed. Now, now, well, can can I tell you this? Um, many clients, and I I would almost say almost all, were completely surprised when I play back the recording of their own speech. And they did not realize that that was the way they sounded. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about Adri, one of my clients, and he said, if I speak like this, why did not anyone tell me this? And I said, they did, but what did they tell you about your way of communication? I was a bad communicator, I didn't listen, you know? He got all of this feedback, but no one told him, you go so fast that I cannot get it. And he didn't even listen to it. He was not aware of being so fast and he had 14 syllables per second. It was tremendous. So in, in giving feedback to each other, um, what we do is we tend to, uh, to grade it more than to explain to the other person um, what actually is the issue. And um, for us in the, in the house, we have the mantra, give me syllables. Because if you go too fast and you miss out syllables, I can't get it. So please give me syllables. That's what I need. You know, then, then I can process. And that is, in, that is important to realize that um, um, maybe speech therapists do this, but not all of them. But in many cases, you, you try to figure out what is going on and you don't know where to look for it. And um, Cluttering is a two-way two street. We have people with phonological cluttering that are unintelligible at moments. We have people with uh, syntactical cluttering that are very disfluent in an easygoing way. 
uh, with normal these fluencies in moments, but they don't do that all the time. And um, I, we have not discussed one issue. Can we do that today, or do we need to to, to save that for next time? Um, actually, actually, I think um, I think this is a good um, I think this is a good stopping point. But I um, and and let's save it for next time. But but can I can I ask a, can I ask a question? Um, okay. that, that, that might kind of wrap wrap it up because you just um, you just mentioned this. So um, I I actually don't know what phonological cluttering and syntactical cluttering is. Um, so so my question is, um, could you explain that and, and which one am I? Because I I don't know. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you look at this, the making the sentence, putting the words in the right order, uh, and getting the words out of the lexicon, if that goes wrong. You you hear you hear you hear people using using the same using the same using the same kind of words or phrases and and and, and they read really repeat it they repeat a lot and and then they continue so in in essence it means that they start before the sentence is complete or the, they start before the sentence is programmed and they are still programming the sentence while they're already speaking normally we don't do that we we there's there's um, like a correction in the brain that we are not even aware of. Um, so that is fun, fun, phonological cluttering. Is uh, mama? I went to the uh, you know I went to the shop to the uh, to the library to you know to you know to to to, 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 to buy a book of dinosaurs. That's what I wanted to do. So you get a lot of information, and I only wanted to say, mommy, I went to the library to borrow a book on dinosaurs. That's the syntactical type. If it goes wrong in planning the words, um, so that's on the level of phonological encoding, and then we talk about phonological cluttering. And that means that um, the sentence is, is, is planned well, but the words inside the sentence are, are at risk. So what you will hear is, Mama went to the library. What? Mama went to the library's book. So you put all the words together, went to the library but by source. So there you hear some of the syllables. This is a you can do it better than I can do that. But <laughs> you know, so that is it's on the level of of, of the syllables that there, that are errors and that there are errors that we don't, don't even hear. Those are the two, two different types. And yes, it can happen all together, of course it can, but this is just to make it clear. Okay, and, and and that makes sense. And then and then, which one am I more um, phonological or syntactical? At the moment, yeah. I think at the moment more syntactical. Okay, yeah, and that's um, that's I think what I uh, that um, that's that's what I would have guessed um, too. But and I ask you at the moment because I have heard recordings. Well, when was it in 19 whatever? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, 2007. And at that time, you were also very fast and unintelligible at, at times. So then you um, also met the conditions for phonological cluttering. You improved a lot in years. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, I've, I've worked a lot on my I've worked a lot on my speech, so um, so thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think uh, next time I need to tell you about the rate development, but because this is an, an important issue that we need to to, to uh, talk about. Okay. Um, great. Um, great. And I think um, I think this was a great hour of of discussion, and I, and I think it will be very very helpful to a lot of people. So thanks. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, so, any any final thoughts or or wrap up um, before we finish? I hope that this video will uh, give pe uh, give people around the world um, the freedom to ask questions, and that we have the opportunity to really explain to them uh, about uh, what cluttering is and how you can be helped and. Um, if we can um, reach that call together, um, you would make me the, the most happy person in the world. Cool. Well, um, thank you. Uh, thank you again. Um, thank you again so much. And um, this has been a great video. And um, thank you. I, I look forward to next time. Yes. Thank you.